Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Riverboat Ride and I'm gonna be sipping on some Earl Grey tea. And if you do enjoy this process, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, ultramarine blue, Mars black, fluorescent purple, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my brushes today, I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same paint, and I'll even give you a paper towel, so that's all in there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are brown, rust, white, and blue. And what we're gonna do, or what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna make it really dark at the top and dark at the bottom, light in the middle, and then I'll come back and put a little bit of blue in the middle so it'll give us some good depth perspective. So I'm going to put rust, brown, about equal parts of both of those, and then just a little bit of white on my brush to start. And I'm gonna go left to right as a brush stroke up at the top of my canvas. And I'm gonna come down about a third of the way with these three colors on my brush. And then as I get about a third of the way down, that's when I'm gonna start utilizing more white on my brush. And what'll happen is my sky or my background is gonna get lighter and lighter as it comes towards the center of the canvas. And you could make this more sunsetty looking, in which case you'd wanna use a little bit more of your white. If you wanted it to be more neutral, you could use a little bit more of your brown. And now I'm picking up more white on my brush as I'm coming down towards the center of my canvas. And I, when I'm doing these gradients, what I'll do is I'll put the paint on and then I travel back up into the previous section to get it to blend in a little bit. And that will help me to get those colors to transition from one to the next. I'm not washing my brush, I'm just picking up white as I come down towards the center of the canvas. And I'm just gonna kind of keep going here until I meet or I get about halfway down my canvas. So I'm almost there now, just gonna make sure that I've got this as blended as I want to, because once I get down to the halfway mark on my canvas, I'm gonna repeat this step from the bottom going up to the middle. So this way, I could in essence kind of keep going from here and just get darker and darker, but I know my brain the way that it works, and for me it's gonna be easy easier to do the same process from the bottom moving up. So right now I'm loading my brush with rust and brown and I'm just utilizing the little bit of white that I still had on my brush and I'm gonna get this nice and dark down at the bottom 
and they don't have to match exactly. Your top color does not have to match your bottom color exactly because one of them is going to represent the sky and the other one is going to represent the water. So they don't have to be an exact mirror image of one another. One of them could be a little bit darker or lighter than the other. So don't feel the need to make them look exactly in the same tonal value or in the, you know, maybe the top one is a little bit more on the rusty side or more on the brown side and vice versa. So that's totally fine. And then I'm just kind of moving my brush again, back and forth, left to right to get this to blend in as much as I want it to. I'm gonna just pick up more white to close off this center area. And once I've got the center area closed off, I'm going to be picking up blue and brown without washing my brush. And this is gonna give me a very subtle kind of off in the distance glow to my enchanted kind of landscape here. I'm not going for a photorealistic image here. I'm just going for something that is in my mind. <laughs> so I'm picking up blue and brown with my dirty brush. I'm gonna go in the center of my canvas and I'm just gonna be going left to right and my paint underneath is nice and wet, so this is allowing me to blend them together. If your paint wasn't as wet as mine, you can certainly add more of the white to, to your brush and that will get it to blend in a little bit more. I am making mine go, I would say maybe three or four inches high. You can certainly make yours go higher if you wanted this to be more of a dramatic look on the inside. Um, and you can certainly bring it further down too if you wanted it to go further down into that water area. So whatever is visually appealing to you, it is going to be um, an accent in our, in our landscape. So you can have fun with how evident you want it or how subtle you want it. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash or put your large brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing our distant tree trunks, branches, and the reflections. I'm gonna be using my medium brush, but I do wanna kind of forewarn you that before we start this step, that you wanna make sure that your canvas is dry. So, you know, this is that time where you get to take the extra long break if you'd like to or find some kind of you know interesting fanning method to dry it, or you could just do as I did and whip out your blow dryer and just get it dry if yours isn't already dry by now. So I am going to be um, making these distant trees very faint. I want them to appear really far away, so I don't wanna give them a lot of detail. I want them to just kind of fade into the distance in our landscape, which will just pull our, our viewer right in. So I'm gonna use my medium brush, and I'm gonna use um, some of the colors that I used in the background. So I'm using blue, brown, white, and I'm also gonna use black. So black and white will make gray, and then I'll, use, I'll be using the brown and the blue just to add those kind of hints of accent type of colors. So what I'm first gonna do is give myself a separating um, point from my land to my water. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of brown and white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna come up, up all, about a third of the way up my canvas. So if this is about halfway up your canvas and this is about a quarter way to here, you're somewhere in the middle of there. That's gonna give you about a third of the way up or down your canvas. Then you can use your brush or any other measuring tool to see how high you did this mark. And then you can go on the opposing side and make one just about as tall. And then I'm just gonna connect those two with a messy kind of line. I don't need this to be perfect. I don't even really want it to be perfect. This is just something that's gonna visually give me a separating point between my land and my water. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm making a whole bunch of distant trees. So I will be using multiple colors on my brush, any combination of white, brown, blue, or black to get these trees on here. I want them very faint, but 
you know, some of them can be a little bit darker than others. So I'm going to actually start with all four colors on my brush. So white, brown, blue, and black all on my brush at the same time. And I might just have a little tiny dollop of each on there, but that's going to give me that sense of variety in those tones as I'm going through this. And I'm going to be very messy. Um, when I do this, I, I often channel my inner Bob Ross into this where I'm just making happy little trees and my brush is going to just go crazy and, and wild and, and have some fun with these sticks and stuff that I'm making. So you can start anywhere that you want. And really what I'm going to be doing is just kind of making myself these vertical type of lines using all my, my heavy colors that I'm probably going to be using are black brown and um, the white. I will use that blue a little bit, but I'm not going to have it go too wild and crazy on me. And I'm really just looking to make these look like they're in the distance, out of focus. I make them a little bit thicker or the brush, the, the um, volume of them is a little bit thicker down at the bottom. And as they're coming up towards the top, maybe that's where I don't have as much on my brush. Maybe that's, I'm just giving some little, some little faint twigs here and there, but I'm really, again, not doing a whole heck of a lot. I know that I'm gonna be having a, a ton more stuff in, um, in the equation, so I'm really not terribly concerned about making this photo realistic or anything in this background. I really am just looking for it to be out of focus, giving myself some, some trees that are off in the distance. You can see I'm kind of wiggling my brush as it gets down towards that horizon type of line. That's given, gonna give us the um, visual information that maybe there's some, some low-lying little things going on. You wanna have them, you know, some of your branches maybe crossing over one another. So that's gonna give you the implication that they are more on the realistic side. And again, you don't have to go crazy with this. We're gonna, again, have lots more stuff involved in this entire landscape. So this is really just giving us that background information setting the the tone and the mood that there's lots of stuff happening even behind the main focal point of the um of the of the composition so you can certainly just have have some fun with this and i don't even really need to do a whole heck of a lot over here on the left side but i know i'm going to have some shorter trees in through in our foreground in through here so i'm going to give just a couple maybe up in the top region just to extend the visual all the way up to the top of my of my canvas. I'm gonna have lots of information in front of here, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. And then I need to do a reflection of them, but I know that the reflection is going to, a ton of it's gonna be covered by the left and the right foreground. So really I just kinda of need to concentrate on these um, center trees that we, that we have in through here. So whatever you've got going on in the center, you wanna create something in a similar sense down below. Um, I think I actually wanna make maybe one of these trees, you know, crossing over so I can show you the, a, a good way to make it look realistic. So if I've got a light tan tree here, I'm really just gonna give myself kind of the same width I think I need a little bit more white. And it doesn't have to, again, be the same exact color because this is going to be in the water. It's gonna have a lot of other information in front of it and on top of it. So I just want that illusion up by that horizon line or where it's meeting the water that it is in fact a similar tree. This one's got a little bit more blue in it. So I put a little bit more blue in that one. I can just kind of bring it down and again, not worry terribly about it, it being perfect. I see I've got a little, a little thing going to the left here, or it's going to the right. I would make it go to the left in the water and something like this. And you can see I'm just kind of playing with what I'm seeing above. If I've got this one coming across here, I can do this with a lighter streak of white coming across this one. And that's going to give you that bit of information that is really going to explain to the viewer that this is in fact a reflection of the stuff that's happening up top. So if I have a darker one in through here, I can just kind of make this darker one in through here. We're gonna have a little bit of um, 
uh, bushes and stuff that are going to that are going to separate these um, separate the reflection from the land also. So if it's not exactly perfect where it's meeting the um, the tree itself, don't worry about that because we're gonna we're gonna do something about that in a minute. And again, we have lots of stuff that's gonna be going in front of these. So don't worry about them not being perfect. And then once we get this done, and again, the side trees, you can do a little bit to them, but you don't really have to do a whole heck of a lot. You can see I'm not even really bringing things all the way down because in my head that they would dissipate a little bit in that water's um, rippliness, so I'm not really terribly concerned. I think I've got most of them on here. Maybe this one goes a little bit this way. And then these ones I know are gonna be totally hidden by all the stuff over there, so I'm not even concerned about those ones. So we are going to be utilizing our, <laughs> let's utilize our, um, our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your distant trees on, you can um, put your medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the water's edge or the distant land and its reflection. So it's gonna be the land that's at the bottom of these distant trees and then we'll do a little loose reflection for it. So I'm gonna be using black, brown, white, maybe a little blue and maybe a touch of green um, because it's gonna to start to get coming a little bit closer to us, but I will explain all of that as I get to it. So for the land, I'm really just gonna be doing some messy marks to give the implication that there's some brush back there and some low-lying bushes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start with some brown and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm really just gonna kind of lay it, lay in place where I want these bushes to go. So I'm just gonna kind of wiggle my brush and give myself these different heights of, of forest ground stuff. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, just foliage and stuff that is laying on, on the forest floor. But my white paint is definitely going to allow me to make it on the lighter side. You can see it's just taking on some light spots and dark spots. I think I'm gonna use a tiny bit of black right now, give myself a little bit of gray in there, maybe a teeny touch of blue. I wasn't sure if I was gonna use it, but I'm feeling like I want to. And maybe, maybe a teeny tiny bit of green, just to give myself the hint of some, some grass or some other kind of stuff making its way to the forest floor back here. And again, not concerned about this stuff over to the right. If you feel like you're not gonna have as much of a massive land as I do over here, then maybe you could certainly add, you know, keep going and add more detail over there. But I know that I'm not going to, so I'm really not gonna worry about it too much. And you don't want this to look like snow, so don't go hog wild with your white. Just you think light colors. You don't need much at all. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my big brush and I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna call it the reflection, but there's also a little shadow underneath that land, which is gonna really make it um, look three dimensional. So I just washed and dried my brush. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna put the shadow underneath that piece of land. So I'm just gonna kind of skirt my brush back and forth, left to right. I don't need or want this to be a perfect line. I want it to look like there's some spots that are maybe dipping in a little bit further. I want there to be a little bit of messiness to it. And of course, that part over there doesn't matter. Now what I'm gonna do is, if you have a ton of black on your brush, you can just kind of dip it in your, in your water and then just give it a good squeeze on your paper towel. This is gonna allow you to have a little bit left, but not much at all. And then I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a reflection for what happened up top. So I know my main colors were white and brown, so I just put white and brown on my brush. I don't need this, again, to be a mirror reflection. I just want it to give me a similar kind of color pattern 
down in the water. I don't want to take away all of the reflections of the trees themselves. So I'm really just loosely going back and forth, left to right, making sure my shadow isn't too, too bold, making sure I carry, if I've got a little green here, I carry a little bit green there. If it's a little bit darker brown, I put a little bit darker brown in through there and I'm making it like ripply, like it's water. So I'm just kind of going back and forth left to right with a very light pressure on my on my brush. I don't have, I'm not using a lot of pressure on my brush, so that way I can kind of control what's happening. And I can say, oh, okay, I want, you know, a little ripple in through here, a little ripple in through there. If I push really hard, I'm not gonna be able to maintain that control. I saw green here, I put green here. I see a little blue over here. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of blue and I'm not washing my brush, but you might find that you want to or need to throughout this process. So if you feel the need to um, wash or dry your brush because it's overloaded or anything like that, feel free to do so. And then we are going to be utilizing the same large brush for the next step. So once you've got your back land done and you feel like you're ready to go on to the next step, you can just wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our front land as well as the first layer of our middle trees. <laughs> so these are our back trees. We're gonna have front trees. They're gonna be those focal point ones in the front and then these ones are gonna be our middle trees. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm using my large brush. I'm gonna be using brown, rust, green, and black. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put the first layer of the land on. So I am going to um, start with just some green, rust, and brown on my brush. And I'm gonna kind of give myself an outline, then we'll stipple it in the texture to it with, um, with these colors. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself kind of an outline. So I'm gonna start up here at the, um, where the, water meets, or where you have the separation line. I'm going to give myself a mark in through there, and then I'm gonna give myself a mark that's maybe about two, three inches up from the bottom of my canvas. And then what I'm gonna do is with a very uneven line, I'm going to be using my brush in a left to right kind of fashion that's gonna bring it right about to here in my canvas. So I'm really kind of giving myself an uneven type of line that's gonna give me a lot of movement in this um, structure for, for the land itself. And then I think, actually, I think I want this to come a little bit, maybe, let's go a little bit further up in this. Let's go up and through here like this. And then I'm gonna come back just a little bit. I'm gonna give myself another little um, inlet kind of area, bringing it to there. And then I'm going to bring this all the way up like there's a little bit of a hill in through here. So once I've got my um, direction that I want it, then I'm just gonna take those colors and just kind of dot. I'll go alternate colors. So I just picked up green. Now I'm gonna pick up some of my rust. I'm gonna pick up some of my brown. And I really just want to give this a, a textured look to it so it doesn't look like one solid color. And even if you have more rust or more green at this point, it's okay because we're going to be adding a whole bunch of different information into it. And once I've got it in its place with my dots, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint and don't worry how it meets the um, water at this point. If you have little speckly marks from your brush, it's okay because you're gonna be doing a reflection and all that good stuff. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black without washing my brush and I'm just giving some darker area down at what I'm gonna call the bottom of the hill not towards the edge, but a little bit away from the edge. This is gonna give you a sense of perspective of, the, of it kind of coming down the hill and then we'll have a little flat spot with some, some um, wild grass and stuff later. So then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my pa paper towel and I'm gonna do another kind of a silhouette or a area over here. So rust, brown, and green. I'm gonna start up in through here. I'm just gonna come out Again, I'm giving myself a very messy um, line 
to give me these little pieces of land all throughout uh, these pieces of land that are just kind of coming right into the edge of this river so to speak and coming back in through here maybe this one doesn't come back as far and then this one I think I'm gonna have coming I think I want this one coming out where I almost had that other and coming out so something like this and again you can uh, you know alter yours to be whatever way you want I'm gonna bring this just a little bit further in like that and then maybe this is just going to be an uneven kind of edge meeting my meeting my side over here and then I'm just going to stipple it or dot my brush to give my to give me this textural type of effect on these um, pieces of the land that I just created so I can just kind of give my brush some some little dot marks in through here and again my colors I'm picking up are just green rust and brown and then once I have it in place, I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint, give myself a little bit of a darker area over here on the left-hand side while my paint is still wet. This helps me to give it some good dimension in through here. Maybe I have a little piece sticking out over here too. You can really build this whatever way that you want. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel, and I'm gonna give myself my middle trees, the first layer of them. So this I am just using um, brown, black, and green are gonna be my colors. So I'm just gonna have mine coming out from this area in through here. I'm gonna have maybe a little, a little pop of it coming out in through there. And I'm just gonna have all three of those colors on my brush throughout this entire um, little process here so that way I have some dark spots and some lighter spots and it looks nice and natural by the time I'm done. We'll, we'll be adding some highlights and all that good stuff but this will get us going in a nice even way and I'm bringing this all the way down to where it meets the land so maybe I'll use a little bit more black down at the bottom so it almost looks like it is going into the shadows as it goes down towards the bottom and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so brown green and black is what I have. I'm gonna bring this area is gonna come about, I would say maybe three inches into the land. And I'm gonna have kind of a little bush of sorts in through here. And then I will have it going over and building some additional height to it over on this right hand side. So again, Use your own visual preference when you're doing steps like this. You might want your trees much larger and fuller than mine. I'm just trying to give mine some dimensional elements where these ones, these middle ground ones are not as big as my front ones and they're just gonna kind of sit off in the distance, but you can certainly, again, make yours as detailed or as, um, you know, shapely as you would like if you want yours to have more shape than mine that's quite all right and again I'm just using my green black and brown to start here and then once we get this done we're going to use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and I think that's good and through there and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're adding the treetops to those distant trees. So I'm using my large brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are mostly brown and white, but you can also use a little blue, a little black, wherever you're, again, visual, maybe even a little green too, if you want to. I'm I might use a little bit of green just so it emulates what's going on down at the bottom, but that's gonna be a preference on your part. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown and a little bit of white. And I really want this to look muted. I don't want it to look like it's got a bunch of detail. So I have very little bit of paint on my brush and I'm even going to just kind of dab it on the side of my palette to make sure I have even less on there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start giving myself some soft, out of focus kind of treetops that are off in the distance. Again, I don't need much just something that's gonna give the implication that those trees are way far off in the distance. I just loaded my brush again with a little bit of brown and white, and these might end up looking like clouds going by. They might end up looking, you know, like 
just the soft exterior of the trees off in the distance. You can really formulate it whatever way you want. I'm just adding that brown and white. I added a teeny tiny bit of green onto my brush too, just to give it a little bit more substance. Um, maybe turn a little gray, so maybe I'll go white with a touch of black on my brush just to give myself, again, a, a little bit more tonal difference or variation in the colors. And I'm not doing, again, you can see I'm not really doing much. I'm just kind of dabbing in these little, these little bits of information that are going to be hid, not hidden, but just adding to the, um, adding to that background information. And if you feel you want it even softer, you can add a tiny bit of water to your brush. I just added a little bit of water to my brush just to kind of mute them a little bit more. There's going to be a big, huge tree up on the top portion of my canvas, so I'm not terribly concerned about that area. Um, and I'm also going to have some big trees in through here, too, so I'm really not terribly concerned just giving a little bit of information back there. So once you've got yours in as much detail or soft focus as you want, we are going to be utilizing our, um, we're going to utilize our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting ourselves a little boat. So I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using black, brown, white, and maybe a little yellow too. So how we're going to do this is we're just going to put a silhouette in place first, and then we'll add some little highlights and make it all look fantastic. So I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to start with just black paint, but I know that I want to have some nice smooth lines, so I'm going to add a couple of drops of water into my black paint so I get it to be nice and thin, almost like um, like an ink type of consistency. And then once I have it as thin as I want, I take my brush and I spin it on the side of my palette. That gets it nice and pointy. So once I've got that in place, I'm going to decide where I want my boat to go. So I'm going to have mine a little off center. So if this is about the center of my canvas, the body of the boat is going to be right about here. So I'm going to have the base of the boat is going to be below about an inch below wherever you have your horizon or the line that meets the water to the land. So I'm just going to give myself a couple of markers. I'm going to have the left side here and maybe the right side is going to be about here. I'm going to have the um, this is this is going to be the back end. That's going to be the front end, the bow or the stern. Not quite sure which. I don't know my boat terminology what either. I know the words. I just don't know where what part of the boat they actually mean. So um, so this is the bottom of the boat. I'm going to give it a little kick up in through here in the back of the boat like that, and then the front of the boat I'm going even higher. So I'm going to go right about to here, maybe, maybe a little bit higher, maybe something like that, and give it a curve to meet that marker that I just did. And then I'm just going to connect these two with a horizontal line. So I'm just going to keep my eye on the prize, which is the other dot. This does not have to be a perfectly straight line because it's going to be um, in water. So we're going to have some ripples and stuff along the sides of it. So no need for it to be perfect. I'm going to thicken my line up a little bit. So I want these corners to remain nice and kind of pointy, but then as it comes down towards the main part of the boat, I'm going to have mine maybe, I would say, a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch wide at the um, main part in through here. So I'm just kind of widening this line. And of course, you can have yours whatever width you want. I'm just creating mine out of the inspiration of um, Asian boats that have the really long skinny body to them. So that's what I'm modeling mine after, but you can certainly model yours after whatever kind of boat that you would like. And then once I've got that in place, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about, a th I'm going to cut it in thirds with two vertical lines that are going to go just above 
my um, my land line. So if this is about a third, I'm going to just give myself a vertical line in through here and then about another third. And again, I'm just eyeballing this. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. The lines are pretty narrow, but you can make yours as wide or as skinny as you want. Then I'm going to put a top on my boat. It's just going to just be a horizontal line. It overhangs this front part a little bit and then overhangs the back part about twice as much. So again, just a nice little vertical line in through here. I'm gonna overhang the back part a little bit more, something like that. And again, have yours whatever you want. If you want yours to be a little curved, you can add a little bit of a curve to it. It can be designed whatever way that you would like. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little fisherman in here. So. I'm not doing anything really fancy. I'm gonna do a body, which is just gonna be kind of the top part of an oval. I'm gonna do a little head in through here, and then I'm gonna put a hat with a triangle or a diagonal line like this. And if I wanted to look a little bit more of the pointier sort of the Asian style hats that I was seeing, you can just kind of bring this into a little bit of a almost a triangle type shape on the top. Then I'm gonna give him a little fishing pole that's gonna come out from his midsection and then just travel into the water, something like this. And then what I'll do is I'll put a couple of little rig, uh, ripples around the end of the, the bottom of the fishing pole. Now what I gotta do is I've gotta put a reflection in the water of the fishing boat itself. So I want this to be really loose and the water is really moving so I don't need it to be really firm. I'm gonna have it of a um, ripply sort. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip my brush in my water a little bit so that way I've got watered down black on my brush to start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just moving my brush back and forth, left to right, for the bottom part or the main shape of the boat in through here. And I'm reloading my brush because I'm running out of paint. So a little bit of water and um, black paint is what I reloaded my brush with. I see this in through here, so I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little pointy part in through there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the butt end of it, only this one's not as high. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for every little piece of structure. So I've got the um, pole there, I've got the pole in through here. And again, you can make it, it doesn't have to be directly straight down, it can be skewed a little bit. I need the top of the boat in through here. So the top of the boat is gonna be just higher than here. So you wanna make sure when you go down to do it in the water that it is in fact a little bit higher than whatever you did for the end and through there. So something like this will give me the reflection of the top part of my boat. And again, I'm adding just a teeny bit of water to my brush right now so I can get this to ripple a little bit more in the water. I need to do my little fisherman in through here. So I'm gonna put him something like this. I've got the um, reflection of the pole. So that's gonna end up maybe even just meeting there and through there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I'm gonna put some little highlights all about the boat. So I'm gonna put yellow and white as my highlight on the roof of my boat. So I put yellow and white on my brush and I'm just gonna do a nice little streak on the top of my boat to give myself some sunshine. I think I need a little more white in through there, there we go. And if you, you know, you can just kind of keep tweaking it until it is of the color that you want. So a little bit of white and yellow. So whatever I did up top, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself the illusion of its reflection in the water. I'm gonna put white and brown on my brush for the highlight on the boat. So white and brown are going on my brush right now. And I'm just gonna give myself a little highlight on the edge of the boat, so the top edge of the boat. So when I come down in this area through here, I don't necessarily have to have it at the top. I could even have two. One is on the side that's closest to us, and then one could be on the far side of the boat. So you can really 
play with um, the details on the boat just by where you're creating these these bits of highlights. So something like this, so I can have one in through there. Then maybe I have one over on the other side of the boat, something like this. And again, you can really play with how you know firm or not firm you want these details to be. And if it's not showing up enough for you, you can certainly use more yellow. That'll give it a good contrast from the background. I am gonna put one on my pole in through here. So just a little vertical line there. I don't know if this one would have one, but we're gonna put one anyways. <laughs> I'm gonna put one little highlight on my guy's hat. So a little highlight in through there, maybe on his fishing pole, because the fishing pole, oh, I gotta put back the black part of the fishing pole in front of the boat here too. So if you did what I just did, which was put the highlight in front of the fishing pole, you gotta put the fishing pole back on. There's that. And then if you had any little tweaks that you wanted to do, oh, I need my little highlights in the, in the water too. So a little highlight coming down my water reflection, little highlight in through here. And then you just kind of keep tweaking it until you've got all of that information in there that, that you feel is gonna bring it to as much realism as you want. And then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your great boat on here, if you wanted to you know, put any more ripples in the water, you certainly could do that. Um, but I'm gonna be using my medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer to our front trees, the tree trunks, the branches, and the reflections. I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black and brown paint. And I'm gonna just be putting a base coat on them so that it adds that nice depth to them and we'll be able to add our bark and other effects to it later. So I'm gonna always have black and brown on my brush at the same time, but when I go to reload, I will just keep alternating. One time I'll pick up brown, next time I'll pick up black, and I just keep alternating. So I'm gonna start with both colors on my brush, black and brown. I'm gonna do my big tree first. I'm gonna have three trees, but you could certainly have as many as you want. On this piece of land here, I'm having my biggest tree about here, and then I'll have a smaller tree kind of growing out of one of these pieces of land. So I'm gonna just kind of mark where I want my biggest tree, the, the widest part of my, um, of my trunk. So for me, all trees get, the branches and the trunk get smaller as they go up the tree. So this is gonna be my widest part and it will get more narrow. I want this to be my biggest tree so it's gonna have branches all the way up to the top of my canvas. So I'm just gonna kind of put my footprint of sorts in place right now just to kind of give myself a um, a starting point of sorts. I've got my left and my right side. I know I'm gonna have some pretty big branches in through here. So I'm going to have quite a bit of paint on my brush as I go through this process. You'll notice that as I go along the edges, I make them very uneven. And I do that on purpose because I like to have natural looking trees and to me they always seem to have some unevenness and they have you know little pieces sticking out here and there so maybe I have a little piece that's going to stick out on the on the side I like to give my branches a little bit of wiggle as um as I'm doing them so you'll notice sometimes I just kind of wiggle my brush a little bit <laughs> Or I'll even have like one that looks like it's broken coming off. So I really like to have a diversity in my branches as I'm doing them. And that to me just gives a more of a natural type of look to it. One of the things that I want to avoid doing is just having branches come out at one level of the tree. So I definitely am conscious about making sure that I have thicker branches coming out from different areas of that center stump. Um, and that's gonna help again to sell the illusion of this being a nice natural real tree as opposed to like a stick figure kind of tree. Um, but you might want yours to look 
way different than mine. It's totally up to you. So I'm going to just kind of bring this little fork up just a little bit. And as I go towards the the exterior branches of my tree, I will definitely just let up on the pressure of my brush and that's going to give me these more narrow type of um, branches at the end. But I also know that I'm going to be having a bunch of um, leaves and stuff on my trees, so I'm not terribly concerned about the edges or the tips of the of the tree because they're going to be covered with a bunch of branches or uh, leaves on them. So I'm not really terribly concerned about that. So that's looking pretty good to me. I think I want maybe a couple more just kind of making their way up into here and maybe just making sure I have my own kind of roadmap going over into here. And, you know, again, the majority of this is going to be covered by leaves. So I'm not terribly concerned um, about its being perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next tree. I'm going to do this one over here, leaving that smaller one in the center for last. This one's going to be, I want this one to kind of be morphing into this little piece of land here. So I'm going to have this kind of coming out at a little angle at the bottom, maybe a little more black so we can so we can really see it. And this one's going to just kind of come up in this vicinity, maybe make its way kind of around that little piece of um, land that we have back there. I think I'm going to have this one a, a little bit smaller, even though it's closer to us. I want that one on the right hand side to be my, my big tree. So I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller or skinnier in, in size. Maybe this one's got a, a branch coming out or a fork in the tree somewhere around here. And again, black and brown are my colors. Every now and again, because my palette is so messy, sometimes I pick up another color by, by accident. But that's all right, because that's just going to add even more to the naturalness of us. And I'm going to put one coming up in through here and maybe a little just kind of broken one coming off the side of it. And again, have fun with these. You don't have to make them exactly as mine. I'm envisioning like a little cluster of leaves around here, maybe a little cluster of leaves around here. So that's kind of where I'm stopping my branches is where I feel that I'm going to have a little cluster of the leaves later. So you could use that thought process to know when you're going to be stopping yours. Um, and then I'm going to put one in through here. So I'm going to Again, just loading my brush with black and brown. I kind of want this to go a little over my the my boat, so it gives the illusion of you know going back further into the canvas. So I think I'm going to have it. I just want to kind of map this out. I want to have one of the branches coming kind of in front of here, and then I think I want it to kind of come down into this little piece of land in through here. And then I, I need to balance it, make sure that it's not too heavy on one side. So I think I'm gonna have some little ones coming up in through here. I think I'm gonna make this a little bit taller though. Make this kind of coming up in through here. And again, you can really just have fun with it. Build it whatever way you want. If you you know don't want to take away from your boat and you want everything to look like it's you know, of a similar kind of tree, you just focus on whatever is making your eye happy. And if you want, you can also go into a smaller brush to get, you know, littler branches. If this, um, the size brush that I'm using is a little bit too wide for you to get smaller branches, feel free to um, switch and just go for a smaller brush. But I, what I tend to do is just use a little bit more paint and don't press as hard when I'm going for the smaller branches. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I just need to make sure that it doesn't look like it's going to fall over, which I can also give that help balance it with leaves on the tree. And then we're going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your trees in place, you, oh, I need the reflections. Hold on a second. So to do that, it's a quick step. To do the reflection, what you're going to do is you're going to come directly below the base of that tree, make yourself a couple of little marks, and then just kind of follow what you the profile of that little section of the tree. Down like this. This one comes in just a little bit. 
and then I'm just going to use that black and brown just to color this in. Uh, it's the reflection, so it does not have to be perfect. And I've planned this so we don't need to do the confusing top branches of the of the tree in the reflection. So we're just going to go to there. The next one, I can just kind of come over to this one. Just go directly below that farthest part out. Give yourself a couple of little markers. And then I'm just going to follow what I see up above. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to go upside down like this or in the reverse. So if you get it, great. If not, just something similar will, will give that illusion. And then I've got this branch coming in through here. It gets more narrow as it goes off in the distance. So I do more narrow as it comes down that little reflection. Then I've got this one. I've got to think when I'm going upside down. So if I quiet for a minute, it's because I'm actually thinking. <laughs> it's tough sometimes when, you, when you've got to throw things in reverse like this. And that's, that's what I'm doing. I, I, I'm looking up above, but uh, in my head I'm going, okay, I've got to do this in an opposite direction. I've got a little piece coming here, so I'll do a little piece coming here. But again, as long as you get something similar, that's going to be enough for the viewer to understand that it is in fact a reflection of it. And then I've got this little piece. That was probably the most difficult one. I've got this little piece in through here. So this one's fun because it could come kind of in between this little piece of land that we've got going on here or the little leaves or whatever. So I marked my two edges. This side is easier, so I'll just come this way and down. And then this one had a little bit of an area where it came in further. So I just did that, and then I'm just gonna color it in. And now we're gonna switch brushes to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your tree trunks, branches, and their reflections, the first layer of them on, you can put your medium brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our middle trees and our ground. So I am I said I was gonna use my large brush, which in fact I am, but I also am gonna use my small brush. So I'm gonna be using a bunch of colors. I'm gonna be using brown, green, yellow, white. I'm gonna use some black. That might be it. I think that's it. Brown, green, yellow, white, and black. And if I use anything else, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to put the illusion of some tree trunks and branches in these back areas. I'm going to load my brush with white, brown, and black. And again, this is going to give you a diversity in those tree trunks of sorts. So all I'm really doing, think sticks. Thank you, or long pieces of of grass, just a little tiny, the illusion of these little tiny um, pieces of tree trunks and branches off in the distance. I'm going to have maybe a couple of taller ones. Maybe they hit the ground in through here. Maybe these aren't as far away, or maybe these are just little bush bushes of sorts. So you can really imagine them to be whatever way you want. I'm going to get some to come into this ground just a little bit. And then I think I'm gonna have some peeking up in through the tree, up in through here. So again, black, brown, and white are my colors that are on my brush. And I'm just giving some small diagonal or horizontal or vertical lines up in through the tree. So that's going to give you that illusion. We're gonna put the um, tree tops on in a second and finish those, but that this gives you that illusion. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the left side in this little batch of trees in through here. So black, brown, and white are the colors that I have on my on my brush right now. And if you're having difficulty seeing the branches, that means you just need more contrast. So maybe I need a little more white on my brush, or maybe I need a little more black on my brush. You might be going for birch trees or oak trees or um, maple trees. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of drew a blank on tree, different tree types there. Um, so you can really make yours whatever way you want. You can have little tree branches sticking out. So just have fun with that part. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to my large brush and I'm gonna put some tree tops on there. So, or 
the dimension of the treetops. So this is gonna be where I'm using brown, green, and yellow on my brush at the same time to add these bits of a lighter tone on top. So this is gonna give you the illusion of a little bit of um, lighter density on, in those trees. And I'm going in between the uh, where I have those branches. So green, brown, and yellow are what I have on my brush right now. I'm gonna add a bit of white in a minute, but this is just giving me the um, that lighter version of the green, so it gives us that um, fullness to it. You can even extend it past your footprint of the original color that you had on there. That's gonna give you more detail around those edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. Green, yellow, and brown are on my brush at the same time. I'm putting it towards the top of those tree bunch sections at the top. This is gonna give me um, that, again, give you the look of multiple sections within this bushel or this bunch of trees. Now, without washing my brush, I'm just gonna kind of dab it on my paper towel. I'm gonna to pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint, just a teeny tiny bit on my end of my brush with my dirty brush, and this is gonna give me that extra bit of um, lightness to these uh, to the edges of these bushes or trees, whatever you're considering them to be. If you want, you can add a little bit more yellow and white. That'll give you a little bit more sunshine to them. But what, again, you don't want it to look like snow. So this is just that extra bit of um, information that is adding that dimensional element to it. And because I'm not using a lot of paint on my brush, this is providing me with those little speckly marks as opposed to a big um, solid area of paint, a big um, solid color being put on these. This is just giving me that the, that speckly kind of look, which will make it look a little bit more natural. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over on the left hand side. So white, and if you want a little bit of yellow on there too, or you can do a lighter version of green, whatever works for you is totally fine. And if you bump into your existing branches, that's okay, because you're going to be adding some detail on top of those. And then what I'm, once I'm satisfied with up there, and again, you can keep tweaking it as much as you want to. You can add you know, whatever kind of dimension you want to, but once you've satisfied with how those are looking, you just come down and do the same thing in the ground. So for me, I'm, I've got that yellow and white and a little bit of green on my brush as well. We also have an extra dimension in our land with that rust color, so it's, got a lot of dimension already so all I'm really going to be doing right at the moment is adding a bit of highlight towards the top of these little edges of the land that are kind of sticking into the water the most so I'm just kind of adding I have the light color on my brush so I'm just utilizing it right now to kind of add a bit of that lightness in through there I'm going to pick up some more green on my brush to get this to kind of dissipate and get a little bit darker as it's going out of the um, out of the focal point near the center of the canvas and again I don't want to overdo the the rest of the ground so I think I want to add a little bit of lightness down here at the bottom maybe some more texture up in through here so really I'm just kind of looking at it and saying mm, what's what's missing do I want more t texture along the edge of my hill in through here and if I do then I just kind of dot in a little bit more in through there if I want more coming on over here I'll do that as well so maybe a little bit more yellow and white is going to come on in through here I definitely I'm, I've got to do a shadow underneath my land I li I'm liking how this is nice and dark over here on the left hand side so I don't really want to do much to it I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel picking up a little bit of green and brown just to make sure that we have a little bit of um I would, you know, texture or um, the little bits of highlights within the dark area, but I'm, I'm not going full on with green or with the yellow and white in through here. I just really want to make sure it looks fully painted, but I, I don't want to take much away. I think I'm going to add a little bit of maybe wildness on the on the little 
river bank edge in through here so I'm just pulling my brush up with a little bit of yellow and white on it give myself maybe the illusion of some wild river flowers just kind of dancing and you know be coming alive over here on the edge and then I'm going to especially in through here I, I know that I need to put a little shadow under my river's edge but I think while I've got this color on my brush I'm going I'm adding these little illusions of some flowers everywhere because I like them now um, what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna utilize the this lighter color um, in a bit of a reflection in the water but not much maybe just a little bit over in through here but actually I think I'm gonna put my shadow on first so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and um, put my shadow on so I'm washing and drying my big brush I want to shadow under my land like we did up on that back land so I just washed and dried my brush I'm putting a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of brown on my brush at the same time and then what I'm gonna do make sure I don't have a hair I'm gonna go right underneath this edge so I'm going just right underneath this edge and it doesn't have to be a straight line I don't even want it to be a straight line I'm just kind of giving myself a really messy kind of edge to the land in through here and again if you felt that you needed to use a smaller brush to accomplish this feel free to do so but just a tiny bit of black and it's at the bottom side of these pieces of land so I'm just going left to right I even want to put one right in through here so just a teeny bit in through there I'm going to go ahead and do it on these ones as well and then once I've got my shadow on there I got this little piece coming out in through here which I think is really cool I will put a tiny bit of reflection in front of I most likely the, this one over here because that one is the one that's kind of closest to us so I don't I'm not gonna wash my brush and just wiping it off on my paper towel I'm picking up some green yellow and white because that's what's closest to the edge of the water for me so to me in my head that's what I'm gonna be seeing the reflection the most of so I'm just taking the green yellow and white and putting a little bit of a reflection in this water's edge in through here and if I have a lot of yellow and white in some areas, just pull a little bit more yellow and white on your brush. Just again, to give you, to give that viewer the illusion that what they're seeing in the water is of a reflection from what is above. And I just um, came a little bit farther into my water than I wanted. So the way that I'm going to correct that is I'm going to put a nice pretty piece of, <laughs> of bigger grass in through here. So you can, you know, just have fun if you make a mistake or, you know, something happens that you weren't expecting, just roll with it. If I have a little bit of the rust color that I want to reflect in the water, I can push, put a little bit of the rust color on my brush. So I'm just kind of giving just the illusion of the reflection down in through here. It doesn't have to be anything really, you know, mirror image. You just really want it to translate as a little bit of a reflection down in the water. And then we're going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your land and your uh, middle trees done, you can wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our leaves of our front trees. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. The, color that, the colors that I'm using are green, brown, and rust. And again, I'm gonna be using them together. And every time I go to pick up my, reload my brush, I will just keep alternating them. So I'm gonna start with all three colors on my brush. So I have some brown, I have some rust and I have some green. And when I go to place these tree tops, I'm gonna to be very cautious as to where they go because I don't want them to take up the whole painting. So for me, I've got so I've got one in through here and I'm just dotting. I'm using like a stippling type of technique. I wanna have a good area for them, but I don't need to 
do it 100%. I don't have to cover up all of my branches. I like to have my edges kind of on the messier side so it looks a little bit more natural, but you might want yours to look like the landscaper just came and trimmed them all and they're all beautiful and perfect. But these messy, these bristle brushes that I'm using, they're great for having these messy edges to your trees and giving it a really nice natural look to it despite the fact that we're going to be using purple in the painting. We'll have everything else nice and natural looking. And then I'm going to be doing, um, I just keep reloading my brush with brown, green, and rust. So this one in through here, I'm not going to have it as tall as this one. And maybe I'll have a little, a little kind of branch with some stuff on it in through here. So this one is going to be visible down here. So I'm going to make sure that I have some of those same colors down in through here. And you can dot it. I'm just moving my brush a little bit to the left and the right to give it um, a little of that uh, movement in the water. So you can certainly utilize whatever brush stroke that you'd like. And then as I'm doing this one in through here, again, I'm, I want to be nice and cautious that I don't overtake my painting with all of these trees. I want you, I want the viewer to still see the background. I want to make sure that I still have enough information with the bow and you know, all that good stuff. So I'm, I'm just proceeding with caution. And again, my colors are rust brown and green. This is going to provide us with a nice base for the purple that will be um, adding to the trees in a little bit. So know that you, of course you can you can use any complementary color but I'm going for a you know a little bit more of a natural look so I'm putting these natural tones underneath that unnatural purple that we're going to be using in a little bit and then this big one is going to be kind of almost providing a nice canopy for the whole painting but again I don't want it to come all the way over so I'm going to come maybe about in through here and then just bring some of these branches of sorts down in through here and leaving some nice ruffled edges. And I, I'm not going on the edge of every branch. I'm making sure that I'm just making it look pretty chaotic and kind of natural and giving myself a good footprint to work on at when I go to put the, the brighter colors on here. And I'm going on the slower fashion just so I can, you know, keep some peekaboo spots so the um, back the branches can show through in a bit and I, you know you don't need all of your branches to show through but if you can have some of them that again is going to give you that natural look to it. I don't like that branch so away it goes. <laughs> you can hide anything that you want with some leaves <laughs> um, but then I'm going to just kind of keep going until I, I feel you know that that's good enough. I've got enough enough branch or enough leaves on here to provide me a good base when I go to do that, that brighter stuff. So now that I feel like I'm good to go in this region, I'm going to be switching to my, uh, I think I'm gonna use my small brush for the next step. You could maybe use your medium brush, but I think I'm gonna use my small brush. So I'm gonna put away my large brush, take out my small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding the tree bark to our trunks and branches of our front trees. So I'm using my small brush. You may wanna use your medium brush if you wanna, if you have thicker paint or if you wanna add more to it than I'm going to, but my small brush is gonna provide me with a little bit of control, especially on my smaller trees. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are definitely brown and white, but I might also incorporate a little bit of blue to complement the rest of the painting, as well as if I need to go into my black to, uh, for whatever reason, to make sure that there's enough shadows or whatever, then I'll do that as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm starting with just brown and a little bit of white on my brush. I'm gonna have my light side of these trees facing the inside of my canvas or the center of my river. So I have brown and white on my brush and I'm putting it in a messy fashion towards the left-hand side of my tree. And you, my brush is just kind of going up and down like this just to give myself a rough type of texture 
to the tree. If you want to see the difference between one tree, one branch from the next, just leave some of that darkness in between. And the dark side is the right side for me. So I'm not going to, if I'm already dark over there, there's no need for me to um, really do much unless I want to add some texture to it. So again, brown and white, I think I'm going to add a little bit more lightness to some of these. So I just put a little bit more white on my brush. And for me, if it's in a mysterious kind of forest such as this, or if there's a lot of trees around, you might see your brightest area of the trees down towards the base where they're almost open the most. They're under less canopy of the top. So I'm gonna just put a little bit more lightness on that left side kind of towards the um, bottom region of the of the tree and then I just kind of wiggle my brush a little bit I'm leaving a couple of strategic strategic dark spots on that edge so we don't lose the visual aspect of the the side of the tree and then I just kind of lightly blend this brightness into some of the darkness over in through here and then I just keep adding my my brown and my white as I see fit for any highlights maybe I want a little bit of a highlight coming up in through this um, area maybe you can see this one's being highlighted by the light over there it's totally you know sometimes it can be random sometimes you can have more you know dimension to it or it can be more solid if I wanted to add more darkness inside one of these I just picked up a little bit of black and this is going to give me more of a shadowed side and it will allow it to tell the viewer that you know this is definitely on the opposite side and it gives the, it a little bit more dimension so you can play with one branch sitting in front of the next just by putting a little bit of a highlight or a shadow on it so you can certainly have fun with that i think i actually want to uh, you can add branches whenever you want to <laughs> i think i want to add a little bit more a little i feel like i have a little bare spot over here so i'm just kind of adding on the fly which is always a fun thing to do and you can do the same whenever you want to because i'm not going to have any um leaves on there so just a little added extra branch helps out for me and then you do the same thing in the reflection so i just have a little tiny bit of my reflection so i'm going to add white and brown and it's pretty bright over in through here so adding a little bit of that white over on this left hand side then i'm going to just pick up some uh, brown paint to get it to blend in over to the dark side and if, again if you wanted to you could add a touch of blue um, i'll show you how that looks in a second here just making sure i've got it within these reflections so if i wanted a little bit of blue i would probably be subtle with it first i have blue brown and white on my brush and again this would be just something that you would do to complement the colors in the painting unless you wanted it more of an abstract type of look um, you could certainly add a bunch of blue into it but if you want to just kind of complement the painting you can just add bit, little bits here and there kind of subtle so it's not too noticeable, but it will um, add a nice effect to the painting itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this one right in through here. So I'm going to start with brown and a touch of white on my brush just to get this, this tree started in through here. And I'm starting on that left hand side and just bringing it into the branches that I feel are a little visible. You might not need to do it on all of them. I'm just kind of doing it on the ones that I, I feel um, you need a little bit. Need a little bit of something. Maybe yours already look fabulous as they are, but I think mine need a little, a little punch here and there. So I just added some more white to my brush. And again, you don't want the tree to get lost in the, in the background. So if you have to leave that a little bit of the dark edge to it, again, nothing really totally noticeable but enough that's going to um, allow the viewer to continue to see that piece of the puzzle because if you if you make it the same color as whatever is behind it it's going to make it really difficult to to this to be able to see it so and this has a bit 
in through here and then I'm just trying to kind of mimic it in the water without doing too much, just making sure I've got a similar color pattern as it travels into that reflection. And again, just have fun with it. It's a it's a wild tree in the middle of a forest. It doesn't have to be, you know, any, anything perfect. We there are there are no two trees alike in this world. So you make yours whatever way that you would like to. And again, if you want to see those little branches, just make sure you give them a bit of a highlight and you can blend that in as much as you want. And then I have this tree over in through here. So again, brown and white is where I'm starting. Maybe a little bit more white so we can see that a little bit more. And I'm doing, on this tree, I'm doing my highlight on the right side. So it's gonna imply that this is kind of that central area of the canvas is gonna be the brightest area. And I just kind of keep adding my brown and my white in a non-clean fashion. So this will give me a real natural look to the tree where it doesn't look like I've planned everything out. Sometimes when we when we plan out things they look less natural cuz I I don't I know mother nature has a plan when she's when she has created these things, but they definitely look very organic and have their own their own way about them. So I definitely as I build stuff like this want to not not think about it too too hard. I mean, I've got my organized way that I do things, but when it comes time to putting the branches on and having them in certain places, I just kind of let my brush take over because that's that's the way for me they, they come out the most natural. So again, right now I'm just kind of adding my white and my brown in a, in a chaotic fashion, but I, I still want to maintain the dark side of my tree. So I just added a little bit of black paint to my brush to make sure that I've got, well one, I, I have to paint over some of those leaves that came in front of it, but to make sure that I have the dimension on these branches that I want. So sometimes you have to go back and just add either that bit of darkness or that bit more information. I feel like I want a little bit more shadow down here and then you know the dark side of the tree for on this one is the left side of the tree so I just kind of keep adding until I feel like I've got that dimension on there and that all the branches are the way that I want and then I'm going to emulate it down in that reflection and I don't have much to uh, much area that needs to be to be mimicked so just kind of watching the color pattern up top it's my white it's my brown I didn't really add I didn't add any um, blue to this one, so this is just gonna be kind of an easy replication here. So just kind of getting this on. And of course, it's the reflection, so it, it can be skewed a bit. And then once you've got these as dimensional as you want them, and of course, I, I might keep tweaking mine, you can keep tweaking yours, but we're gonna move to the large brush for the next step. So whenever you're done, you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the treetops on our front trees. So the colors that I'm using are purple, rust, white, and I might use a little bit of green too. So I'll, I'll let you know if I do. But how I'm gonna start it is with some purple and white, or it's purple and rust on my brush at the same time. So I'm just gonna add some purple and some rust, and this is gonna, in essence, kind of get the party started with the purple on the trees and give me more shape to where I want like my little clusters of um, on, on the trees themselves. So purple and rust and I'm doing this on top of what I already did but I don't need to do it a hundred percent. So I'm really just kind of re-wetting in, in a sense but with not a ton of paint on my brush and this has given me it's getting that purple to work its way into the tree without being too invasive and it's giving it this nice natural tone and of course you can bring it outside of the um, of your footprint a little bit as well so again just kind of adding a little bit of this purple and rust and this is where I can say, oh, well, maybe this one is going to be in front of that one. Or, you know, this one is definitely going to sit behind that one. And I can start planning out where I'm going to put my real highlights 
to these um, to these bushes in a minute. So I'm just kind of, as I'm doing this, I guess I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> but blue, and, I mean, uh, purple and rust are my colors. And again, I'm just getting a little bit more of that vibrancy before I put the super highlights on. And this is just giving me, um, again, a nice way to work that purple into the equation without it being too invasive. So now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm gonna be picking up purple and white. So this is gonna be that highlight that we're going to add onto it. Oh, I'm going to, I might use some yellow too in a minute, but I'll, I'll talk about that. So purple and white, you could even go for a lighter version. If that scares you just doing it by itself, you could kind of mix it around a little bit on your palette, but I'm not going to mix it too, too much. And then I'm just adding this, this bit of a highlight to it. So it doesn't have to be, a you know, white, white, white. I'm, I'm picking up a little bit more of my purple right now, so it's not so white. And this way, this is gonna bring me into a lighter value on some of the areas of the tree without, again, losing my dimension on there. So again, I've just got purple with a little bit of white. So I'm in essence kind of working my way to the light part. Of, or to the lightest part of these trees. And you don't have to go systematic on them. You can kind of work your, work your way in different areas so that way you have different pockets of bright spots. We're gonna, I'm gonna put um, the lightest of light on in a minute, but you can see how they're starting to really just come into their own and have a nice dimension to them. And then I'm gonna put some up in through here, maybe a touch on the, the tips. You can see it's coming out just a little bit more and being a little bit more aggressive on this tree up top because it, to me, feels like it would have bigger areas of, of the colors. So now that I've got that, if I wanted to, I could add some green to it. So you could certainly wipe your brush off on your paper towel. You could intermingle some green if you wanted it to have a little bit more of that natural look to it. You can just, I just have a tiny bit of green on my brush to just kind of intermingle those colors just a little bit, but not necessary. But if you wanted that green to pop just a little bit more, we had it in the base coat. Um, so if you wanted it to, be more visible on this exterior coat, feel free to do so. I'm digging it, so so it's going on. <laughs> and then once I've got a little bit of green on here, and I know that the green is gonna dry a little bit darker because it is in fact on, I'm putting most of it on a dark surface and I know that it is, uh, my green is on the translucent side, so it's gonna take on the, some of the tonal value of whatever is underneath it. So mine will probably turn out a little bit darker for unless I'm in a lighter area, but yours might be very vibrant. Now I think I'm gonna add a little bit of that yellow and white. I know I didn't say yellow in the beginning, but as I was thinking about my final highlight, I'm gonna do it with some yellow and white. I don't wanna go super duper bold, so I'm gonna just take a little bit of yellow and mix it in with a little bit of my white so that way it's just got the hint of, a, of some sunshine glow on it. And this will be my, my final kind of punch or um, vibrant note to these, to these leaves. So I'm not gonna do a lot with it, I'm just really, giving that visual information that the, it's got these little sections to it. Maybe some are a little bit brighter than other. Maybe some come out a bit more. And if you're going through this process and you're like, oh, I want some more purple, don't wash your brush. Just pick up a little bit more purple and start intermingling it. You know, that's when, you, when you're looking at a tree, all of those colors, they're going to be dancing with each other. So you don't have to feel like one section has to be you know, just the, the highlight and one section has to be just the shadow or the, you know, the, the main color, you can certainly just keep overlapping and intermingling. But what 
I hope you're noticing I'm doing is I'm not picking up a ton of paint and globbing it on there. I'm really just doing these little speckles to put the, the illusion of these highlights on here. I'm not going to do a, a ton to the top, um, but I am going to do just a little bit maybe on these tips so you can see that it's got maybe a little bit of that light to it. And then I've got this little guy down here that I didn't address. So we're gonna put some, some purple on my brush just to get some of these colors to, to in, translate that that is what's happening up there. Maybe a little bit of green now, because I know that I had some green up there. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just want it to have a similar color pattern down in that, um, in that reflection. And then you just keep fiddling, you know, maybe you step back from it and wait for it to dry a minute and maybe you keep tweaking yours. But that, in essence, is all I'm going to be doing to my trees. I, you know, I, I say that, but I'll probably wait for it to dry and look at it and see if there's anything more that I want to do to it. And then we have one last little step to go and it's going to be with your small brush. So once you've got your tree tops on, you can wash and dry or just get ready your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I normally sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I think I'm gonna sign this one. Mm, I think I'm going bottom right on this one. And I'm gonna be using my small brush, black paint. I sign mine with my initials but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. It's your painting, you sign it however you want. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very nice kind of mysterious forest painting. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.